Welcome to the WRL Daily Download. I'm Julian Grace, and today's deep dive conversation is with WRL traffic anchor Brian Schrader. He's here to talk about traffic in the triangle. We'll touch on congestion, commuter rail, the best way to get around, and projections that could disrupt our flow of traffic in the near future. Brian, thanks for being here today. How was your commute in this morning? It was it was smooth. It was okay. smooth. I came after rush hour, so well, that's it the was key. it was perfect, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is the secret. You found the secret. Well, I know you have the secret sauce and I've uh, looked into a little bit of more information and I found a report from Texas A&M Transportation Institute that the average American spends 54 hours a year in traffic delays. Mm. So the question on the floor, Brian, uh, since COVID, is traffic worse or better now that people are back in the office here in the Triangle? I th- it has certainly returned to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, Allie Ingersoll, our, 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 one of our reporters here at WRL, did a story where she really went through the data and found that traffic levels in North Carolina and in the Triangle specifically have returned to where they were in early 2020 before the pandemic. I remember doing traffic in those first few months of the pandemic, and it's just like the traffic evaporated. There was right. nothing for me to talk about. And uh, as slowly as people have gone back to school, back to work, it's gotten back to normal. And by normal, I mean congested. Uh, but it's interesting. I've noticed a different pattern as as traffic has returned. You will see backups in the usual spots that we saw before the pandemic, right. 40 westbound coming in from Johnston County. It's always going to get backed up. That that was the first to come back. But now I'm noticing coming out of Zebulon on 64 westbound, it gets backed up every morning heading toward Wendell. Uh, 87 southbound heading through Nightdale toward 440, it gets backed up every morning. Over in Durham, you know, the freeway now gets backed up uh, 885 in both directions, which did not happen before The pandemic. Uh, So there are some new patterns out there, and I think a lot of that reflects the growth that we've had in the Triangle over the past couple of years. More people are moving out to the eastern part of Wake County in Zebulon. Um, Things are different now on the Durham Freeway now that they have the East End Connector open. So there, there are some differences, but yes, traffic is back to normal. Were you surprised initially when you saw those new traffic patterns popping up? Yeah, I was like, oh, is this data correct? I haven't seen this before. Or, you know, there must be a crash out there or something causing that. But no, it's just every morning, you know, 64 westbound coming out of Zebulon is going to get backed up. But there are only two lanes out there. So it's just too many cars and not enough road. So this showcases the growth is real that we talk about consistently here in the Triangle. People moving here, that showcases it, right? Absolutely. You can see it on the map every morning and every afternoon. All right, you are full of suggestions on how to deal with traffic. I love tuning in in the morning, getting a little bit of information that I need to know. What is the best advice you would give someone navigating through congestion in the triangle for the very first time? For the very first, well, first of all, of course, you got to wake up and watch WRL News from 4.30 to 10. <laughs> well, that's the very first right. thing. Absolutely. Once you got that taken care of, uh, if you can wait till after the rush hour, as you experienced this morning, you're going to save yourself a whole lot of time. Uh, as you complete that commute to and from work, you're going to notice the patterns. You're going to see when 40 gets backed up in your direction. When does 440 get backed up on your way home or on your way to the office? Just take note of that. Those are patterns that are permanent. They're not going to change. They're probably going to get worse, but at least uh, in the short term, you need to try to plan your your commutes around that. And something else that, we were, uh, that Allie found uh, talking with the DOT with so many people now doing a hybrid kind of situation, working from home, and but having to go to the office maybe three days a week, they're picking Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, not surprisingly, as their <laughs> office days. I would pick that, too. Exactly. Who doesn't love a long weekend? And so if you, you need to keep that in mind as you are making your life plans around traffic. That, that is just so much to take into consideration. What are the, okay, we know, what are the peak times for rush hour? Those have changed a little bit as well, because it used to be uh, maybe 7 a.m. to about 8.15 in the morning before the pandemic. That's where we would see, the at least for the morning rush, the busiest times. But now that you have people working a little more flexible schedule, we start to see that building maybe about 6.30 and lasting a little longer. 8.30, 8.45, we still see traffic congestion. 6.30. That's when that every morning I can count on 40 westbound around the Clayton Bypass to start showing slowdowns between 615 and 630. Was it that way two years ago? No. Three years ago? No. This is all new. It's as new. Yeah. I want to go back to talking about the growth 
it is estimated the triangle is seeing about 5,000 new residents a month. Do we have enough infrastructure for the new residents? And what is DOT doing to help the flow of traffic? I, I think the best way to answer that question is to understand that it takes years, if not decades, to get a, pro- a road built from idea to opening lanes. One example of that is the Easton Connector in Durham. This is the new freeway that they built to connect the Durham Freeway 147 to I-85. This has been on the book since the mid-1960s. The it 60s. took that long to get that project funded, planned, and built, and it opened earlier this year. So this is not something you can say, boy, the traffic sure is rotten out here. Let's build a new road. This is this is a long process. The DOT works with local planning groups to kind of create a 25-year blueprint for what they want to do. Then they score it about, you know, is this going to have a uh, what impact on safety, the cost-benefit analysis of it, will it really help congestion? And it all goes into a big statewide plan that gets updated every two years. Hopefully there's money for it. You know, that's <laughs> always the big that's thing another here. Hurdle, right? There are lots of great road projects and transportation projects out there, but there isn't any money for it yet. So the DOT is constantly looking at that stuff. Uh, it's frustrating. Right. I know when you're sitting in traffic, like, why won't they just build another lane out here? But you got to realize this is a long, expensive process. But they are right now, as you've seen, working on a lot of projects to try to ease the congestion. Some of those projects that have been on the books for years are finally coming to fruition. 40 between uh, Southwest Raleigh and or Southeast Raleigh and Clayton. They are widening that through Garner, adding two lanes in each direction. Just check with DOT for an update. They hope to have that open in the spring of 23, uh, those additional lanes. Building new interchanges at Jones Sausage Road in Garner and 42 in Johnston County. Hoping to have all of that done by 2024. They're also widening I-40 in Durham and Chapel Hill between 15501 and I-85. This is a bottleneck every afternoon on that westbound side of I-40. It goes uh, down to just two lanes there heading into Orange County. They're building one lane in each direction. That just got started, so that's going to be a little while before it's done. Widening the Beltline in Raleigh, that is a project that has uh, been going on for a couple of years now, adding one lane in each direction of 440 between Wade Avenue and Walnut Street. You realize that section of the Beltline just out here by the TV station right. is the same design as it was when it was open in the 1960s. The same design. Yes. It's a different city <laughs> than it was 60 years ago. Uh, that work is going to continue through 2023, and they're hoping to have most of that open in 2024. Oh, that's, s- that's a mess. But uh, so maybe a more innovative thing that is that is currently being planned is it bus rapid transit. Mm. This is a dedicated series of bus lanes on four roads leading into and out of downtown Raleigh. They're planning the corridor for Newburn Avenue right now. They're they're about to begin the right-of-way acquisition. This is going to be high-frequency bus service. This yeah. is just a way to get you in and out of downtown quickly. And they're going to do that along Western, uh, South Saunders, and Capitol okay. in the planning stages. But it is coming. That should help. All right, Brian. So much more to talk about. We will take a break right there. When we come back, more with the WRL traffic anchor, Brian Schrader. And when we come back, we will talk about the future of light commuter rail between Durham and Raleigh. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the WRL Daily Download. I'm Julian Grace with the WRL Traffic Anchor, Brian Schrader. And we are talking about all things traffic in the Triangle. Brian, could commuter rail ease traffic congestion in the Triangle? It could. Uh oh. <laughs> Sound a little hesitant there. I think anyone who's talking about uh, rail plans in this region has has learned to speak uh, with a lot of qualification. Um, okay. We have studied light rail for years, and we got to understand this is two different things. Light rail, you've got to build new tracks. This is a you're building a brand new infrastructure with light rail. Right. They have studied it for decades in this area. Uh, they tried in. Uh, Durham and Chapel Hill. They were going to build light rail there, 18 miles of it. It failed in 2019 because they had problems acquiring the land and it got too expensive. They originally estimated it was going to cost about $1.5 billion. And then several years later, that cost jumped to $2.5 billion to just do 18 miles. So 
they gave up on it. And right now there are no light rail plans on the books in the Triangle. None. None. But there's a commuter rail plan, but it is just a plan. And the difference here is that it uses the existing railroad tracks that we have. They just put commuter trains on it. They have to build out the stations, but it is less expensive than building out an entirely new infrastructure. Now, this commuter rail plan would run from West Durham through Cary, Morrisville, RTP, Raleigh, Garner, and end in Clayton. So we're talking about 40 miles or so of tracks. They say that if this happens, the fares would be comparable to bus fares, uh, but we're already running into the money problem. Money again. I knew that was coming. The estimate was about $2 billion when this was first hatched several years ago. Now they're saying about $3 billion. Who knows what's going to happen? It is being studied right now. But it's all about where the money's going to come from. 50% of it would have to come from the federal government, and there's no guarantee that's going to happen. So they're studying it, going to talk about it next or in 2023, and then go to county commissioners. But who knows? Okay. It's a study. Yeah. I get that. I'm going to put you on the spot. How far away do you think we are from seeing commuter rail or light rail? Uh, Having watched that develop over the years in this position covering traffic. Uh, I will believe it when they start <laughs> building it. Now they That's say a safe the, answer. Yeah, this, they say the best case scenario that construction could start in 2025 and maybe we could get trains rolling by 2030, but who knows. But when you see the growth and you just mm-hmm. talked about that, we it is obvious we have to do something. Yep. Are there other traffic solutions that the Triangle or DLT has not put on the table yet that you think, oh, this could benefit us? There is a plan to convert I-40 really from Chapel Hill all the way through Raleigh down toward Garner into managed freeway. So this uses, there are a lot of possibilities that, they could include with this, including uh, express lanes in North Carolina. We're not crazy about HOV lanes, but we do have express lanes in Charlotte where it's a toll. Okay. And that's how they that's how they approach that issue. Um, there's a chance that could come to this area in, here in the Triangle. They're still studying that. But they do have a plan on the books to convert I-40 to a managed freeway, which would primarily use ramp metering. Now, we're using that already on 540 westbound in the morning. In North Raleigh, uh, there are sensors in the road uh, on the interstate and also on the ramp, and it measures the congestion on the interstate, the through traffic, and you stop at a stoplight on the ramp, and then it gives you a green to join the flow on I-540. It makes traveling on the interstate itself much faster. Okay. I mean, you, the, the, they have measured improvements out there. It's a little tricky, though, on the feeder roads going into it because you've got traffic backed up there at the ramp trying to get onto the interstate. But overall, it's designed to save you time. They want to do that along I-40 through the Triangle. It's on the books for 2028, 20, 29, <laughs> but... Is this a money issue as this well? This is a money issue. And I think they're also trying to determine what they want to do out there. Mm. You know what? Which one of these systems they want to to put in place? But they are uh, there's some other things that they're experimenting with right now at a smaller level in uh, Cary and Durham and Apex smart roads, using apps and sensors to uh, basically let the road communicate with the driver. So I saw a demonstration of this in Cary. You you pull up to a, a an intersection and it tells you how long you have a green light. It counts down for you. It measures. If somebody happens to have the app running on their phone, is there a pedestrian crossing? Mm. You know, little safety things like that. They're also, you know, when we did roundabouts for the first time in North in the Triangle area, everybody freaked out because we never had have used this? them before. Exactly. Right. But now I think people are getting used to them. But out at Hillsborough at Pullen, that was a mess when it first started because nobody knew. We do I go? Do, do I yeah. stop? Do I keep going? What's going on here? <laughs> exactly. Um, and to, to to the driver's credit here, DOT did make some design changes within okay. the first little while of that because there were a lot of crashes. So but they're receptive to the criticism. It, they're receptive to the criticism. They took action and, and things move well out there now. And there are more roundabouts coming. They are also experimenting with modular roundabouts. This is where you take 
a roundabout and put it in an existing intersection's footprint so you don't have to build additional lanes. They just basically take uh, tiles and bolt them down in the middle of the road. You don't have a lot of downtime for construction, closing traffic lanes. It's a lot cheaper. That's something that you're probably going to see more of in the years to come. Why does the triangle now, you're going to correct me on this, Brian, but it appears that the triangle does not have any HOV lanes, also known as carpool lanes. Can those lanes make a difference in congestion? You kind of mentioned a little bit about that earlier, that we're not big on that in North Carolina. Do we have any of that in the triangle? No, we don't. Why not? Uh, They have studied it for a long time, and there's still, it is... There, it is not universally effective, HOV lanes, because in a lot of cases, they're just underutilized because people don't want to put three or four people in their car to go back and forth to work. Um, in Charlotte, they have these express lanes where you can uh, use the a toll system to go by yourself on that lane, or if you have more than three people in the car, it's free with HOV. So they're experimenting with that in Charlotte, but it, they have studied it for decades here uh, for use in the triangle, and it just has not taken. Wow. Yeah. H- have you heard anyone from the public say, hey, this could possibly work here or champion? I, I have found that uh, people have strong opinions about the HOV system uh, <laughs> on both sides. And it, it's like a lot of these things. In some cities, it works fabulously. The, the people are ready for it. They want it. In other places, you just have an empty lane of travel out there. Our light system, is it synchronized? In many spots, yes. In most spots, I would say. In, in Raleigh, for instance, they have taken a lot of uh, pains over the past 10 or 15 years to work on synchronizing those lights. Could we see more of that? Oh, yeah. That's a, that, that's a system that gets into the smart roads sort of category, and there are a lot of little projects that get... Uh, as they develop it, they add something like that onto it. You know, we're going to repave this road or whatever. Well, let's let's synchronize the lights while we're at it. Where do you see that's most effective? Would you say capital? I think that when you catch the uh, wave through downtown Raleigh on McDowell or Dawson Street on up Capitol, yeah, it works. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> I, I bet it does. Well, Brian, it looks like we're running out of time. I have more questions, but yes, we are out of time. So I'll just follow you to your car and ask you those questions. Yes. Yeah, so just call me before you leave and I'll tell you what road to take. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time, Brian. And thanks for listening to the WRL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WRL.com backslash newsletter.